the Puma farm. It's a regenerative farm, meaning that we don't use like artificial chemicals that are herbicides that kill weeds, fungicides that kill fungi or mushrooms, pesticides that kill the bugs, or fertilizers which nourish the soil, nourish the plant usually. And the reason for that is then the soil is healthier when you do that. And we think that the key to creating great produce and conserving um, energy is by nourishing the soil and drawing down carbon and storing it in the soil, which is another goal of regenerative farming. It's actually an uh, anti-climate change set of actions. The bees that are flying in and out of the beehive, which you can see from the back, see the bees going in and out? And they will make a new queen over the next week or so. Side of it is bee comb, the little hexagonal drawn out comb that they would normally build sell, lay eggs in and build um, cells through and eventually store honey in. So over here are our compost piles. They're all in different stages. Everybody see that? This is on the left over here. It's not broken down at all. It's just browns and greens together. And this is the most decomposed. And how we use a giant thermometer to measure its temperature, which at least technically should be um, 131. So think about what goes in it now. Why do you want to heat it up? Yeah. Burn out the weed seeds. There are billions of weed seeds in there from clippings all around. If we put this stuff right on our trees now, we will have more weeds than we know what to do with. So. You want it to get hot because you want the wheat seeds to burn out. And you want to develop the nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium and all the minerals that are important for nourishment of trees. Let's walk on the oak meditation path up to the gong. I've okay, got you with your mouth open. Oh. From here, you can see what the farm looks like. Um, this is what three acres looks like. Um, see the avocado trees below us, the olive orchard to our left, um, a clear space. We have lots of big cisterns on the property that collect rainwater. And here are two smaller ones to collect water and store it and then um, be able to feed the fruit trees and the garlic that's planted there with the rainwater whenever they need it. So collecting water, we also have one off the house for 2,500 gallons and one in the orchard for 2,500 gallons is a way of trying to use less resources and use what we have wisely. Do you think this scent is? It's allspice. Is it a bunch Wait, of spices mixed together? No. <laughs> I know. Isn't that amazing? Wait, I thought it was all the spices. <laughs> like curries are, right? And Ross oh, Halloween yeah. is, and oh, yeah. lots of other like spice mixers are, yeah. but yeah. all spice we need is a there is no mm -hmm. And you have to take the ones that are already slightly beat up, because they smell great, and the tree is almost done with them. So you can have one if you want for home to show your parents that you know what all spice is in the leaf. So the way you pick that is by not hurting these young leaves which are just growing, but with your thumb and forefinger just breaking it off gently, like that. Okay. A couple reasons. One is that you can see right in back of us all the weeds. Where are all those weeds going? Compost. Compost pile, that's right. And what, if, what do you think is planted at the post? Near it. And these are grapevines called gamme noir. Between the plums, you can just see the green and yellow, green and yellow, green and yellow. That's coffee. And you guys are going to get to plant like we plant on a small scale and then you can take it home. Because this really is a sand dune. It's the same thing as like planting in a desert. But we use what this is. Who knows what this is? Cactus. That's right. It's a cactus paddle. These trees all have at least half a cactus paddle 
crunched up at the very bottom. So it will provide the roots some nutrition so you don't have to feed the plant from the top. You can feed it from the bottom. Every year we plant cover crop. It's a combination of 13 different species of plants that help the soil become healthy, store nitrogen in it, and give it organic matter. So you are adding organic material to the soil. And that's the goal. You want to make the soil better. So you get better, healthier plants, more able to protect themselves against pests and diseases. Passion fruit are tropical. And Santa Barbara is a Mediterranean climate. We don't have a lot of water, but we do have a lot of humidity. So we can grow things like passion fruit. They do very well here. They don't require a lot of care or nutrition. We do have to fend off bugs, but we do that often with um, organic sprays like neem oil or just water to spray off bugs. Passion fruit themselves are very high in vitamin C. They're good for you. And like all plants really. And when they're smooth on the outside like this, they're thick on the inside. But as they wrinkle, that thick inside becomes more juice. And, and so we like to wait for until they are wrinkled so that they can they can be eaten happily with a spoon in half. You, I wanted to show you, you can grow more subtropical things in this environment, actually in your own homes in Los Angeles, because like these are mini papayas. And you think of papayas as only in South America or Hawaii or something, but you can grow papayas that are sweet. This, the mangoes behind you also gave mangoes last year and they're starting to flower this year. This is a cherimoya which tastes like vanilla ice cream and uh, is also a tropical fruit. And um, one of the things, this little place, which is also pure sand, um, but has a cactus paddle at the bottom of the trees, reminds us is how to use your senses. So this over here, everybody should get a leaf of this, a little green leaf. You get most of it by crushing it. It's okay to crush. It smells kind of green. But the way to remember your senses is to watch, touch, listen, see, smell, taste. This is a broccoli head that you might buy in the store or at a farmer's market. Over here was the same thing about three weeks ago. What happened? That's right. And what happened? Why are these coming back? That's right, because it has side shoots. So these side shoots are extra. And look how big this plant is. It is huge. What you get in the store is maybe this, but probably you get it little florets in a plastic bag. Yeah. But that's not really how it grows. So can you eat these? That's right. What do you do with them? That's right. Or steam them or use them as for wrappers. Like uh, for roll, because so the stem is edible. There you go. So you get broccoli leaves too. Ooh, can I eat the broccoli? You definitely can eat the broccoli. How do you clip it? So what kind of plant is this? Lettuce. That's right. What kind of lettuce do you think, Sasha? That's right. Good for you. Lettuce. All lettuce does this. When you get a head of lettuce, you can scoop it down like that. That's what happened over here. We cut and allowed the lettuce to grow again. This is the second time it's a lettuce. Now, what about these outside leaves? What do you notice about this leaf? It's a hole in it. it has a hole in it. What does that mean? Someone had lunch early. Right, someone was eating it earlier. But the plant fought it off. And the protecting chemicals that the plant made when it was exposed to those predators are chemicals that protect you too when you eat them. I'm going to teach you how to harvest it and not hurt the tree. A lot of citrus is harvested by hurting the tree, but we want it not to do that. And everybody will get one for your bag. You want to turn it counterclockwise or clockwise, whatever is easier for you, until it comes off in your hand. 
like that. And you want to choose one that is deep orange. So everybody gets to go all the way around this tree, find a deep orange rang per lime, and then scratch the skin and smell it. Everybody gets to crush and smell this too. So any warm that water that comes down the driveway when it rains, we try to funnel into this system that we made to drain all the water into the avocado orchard and into the citrus orchard. And we use sandbags to make sure it doesn't jump the curb like that you had to come in when you drove in. And as a consequence, the trees around it get a little extra water on the way for the water to go into the avocado trees and the citrus grove. And we, and one of those trees is the Buddha's hand. If you turn around, you yeah, see the Buddha's hand, which is a citrus that uh, comes from China, like actually all citrus do. It's called, it's, it's a parent of a citrus called a citron. And it is super fragrant. It's used as an air freshener and also as medicine in China, to, as a tonic against lung disease. Because we think that whatever goes in the soil flavors the plant and it's good for the earth. And so this is a demonstration for you guys to um, be able to plant yourself in this way if you want. You see the, the cactus paddle over there? We saw one before. So we do it on the table like I'm doing it because it's kind of firm. Like this. And as I do that, See all the juice that's inside that? Mm -hmm. Inside is not just a lot of water, but also nitrogen and potassium, and magnesium and boron, and all the elements that plants need to grow. Once you do that, you take it and put it in the bottom of your pot. This is our soil mixture. There's one bag per two pots. That is the color that soil should be if it's nutritious and then put some extra soil around it so that the roots that were exposed are no longer exposed and press it again. Compaction is actually a way of telling the roots that it's being planted again in a new place. Um, it's not a verbal telling, but the roots actually respond to that. They understand that they're in a new environment and now they're gonna start going down. Your pot before you get a yeah. Is it okay for Okay. If it won't fit on in the yeah. Are you going to name it? Oh, what the hell is that? There's so many. I haven't held a holy fire. I was such a holy fire. Don't forget there's a beer right here. I don't know if I want one. You can name your plant and take it home. Thank you all for coming to learn about regenerative farming here at La Puma Farms. I hope you had fun and learned a lot and maybe we'll go home and grow a little of your own groceries in your backyard.